Nilo Prema Dana Koruna Prachur Heno Prabhu Kota Gela Charya Takur Kaha Moda Swadu Prupa Kaha Sanatan Kaha Dasaragu Nata Patita Pavan Kaha Moda Bata Juga Kaha Kaviraj Eka Kale Kota Gela Godana Tandava pronouns to all of the devotees. My name is Vaidehi Devi Dasi, and I'm going live tonight from the Sokal Seva Ashram. Uh, today, I am actually in my room. It's been a grueling week. <laughs> um, so I wanted to speak tonight a little bit about uh, Suresh Ray Didi's passing away, just because it's been at the forefront of everybody here at the Seva Ashram. Um, but as I'm just kind of waiting for everyone to come on. I just want to, first of all, offer my Dandava Pranams to everybody that is here and joining this evening and also um, offering my respects. I'm, I will be going down to the temple to put their lordships to rest. I just packed, jam-packed day today and realized it was time to go live. So I'm just going live from my room and then we'll come back to the temple room just after this. Um, but yeah, offering my respects to their lordships, Jai Sapadikara Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharvika Giridhari, and to our resident Acharya Srila Bhakti Pavan Janardhan Maharaj. And uh, pranams to our Gurudev, uh, Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj, and a little invocation. Om Ajnati Mirandasya Gyana Gyana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Gurva Bista Supurakam Guru Kaneir Ashisha Sambhushitam Chintya Chintya Samasta Veira Nipunam Shri Rupa Pantanugam Govinda Bidam Ujvalam Varatanum Bhakti Anvitam Sundaram Bande Bishva Gurun Cha Devya Bhagavat Prem Nohi Bija Pradam and this is why we are all here, because of this Prem Nohi Bija Pradam, because of this seed of Prem, of love of God, that Gurudev is planting and instilling in everybody's hearts, your heart, my heart, everybody's hearts. And that is really what draws us to the Seva Ashram, what draws us to Krishna consciousness, what draws us to our spiritual practice, and that is love, affection home comfort and we're all looking for that in this world and our Gurudev is the embodiment of that and the embodiment of the distribution of that in this generous mood of giving of audarya of serving of nurturing and nourishing affection love listening hearing remembering speaking that he so beautifully embodied to all of us uh not just the adults and the advanced senior devotees, but also to the children, to the animals, to the plant life, to every single living being that has come in his presence. And so the reason I say that is because, you know, we've lost a really beautiful devotee, Suresh Ray Didi, who also has been an embodiment of nurturing love and affection to the entire community, like every single, practically every single person who is in our community considered her their grandmother. <laughs> and so, you know, even my mom, right, like one of her friends and elderly, you know, senior friends who was such a support um, in times of challenge, difficulty, times of fun and play. Um, and so it's a real loss to our community because you could say it is, you know, one of the 
um, not to undermine anyone or anything else, but it's one of, one of the few devotees that really embodied and lived that mood of giving, that mood of distributing, of connection, of affection. And, you know, Suresh Didi was particularly fun, actually, also. <laughs> um, fun to grandchildren, fun to granddaughters, daughters, friends, sisters, um, you know, so she really was a pillar and has been a pillar to our community. So those of you that are here and watching tonight, you know, I wanted to speak a little bit just about her in general, but also just highlighting this mood, you know, of how, how can we uh, be more like that? When I think about Sureshri Didi, I just think like, wow, even though she was in so much pain, she still showed up for her service. Um, and, you know, the other day I was covering somebody's puja shift and I was so exhausted and um, just like, uh, I'm still exhausted. <laughs> and like, you know, just, and, and I thought, wow, like, if I feel tired, imagine how Suresh Didi felt. She was in pain with cancer, with so much um difficulty and limitation in her physical body yet with such a um uninterrupted 24 7 flow of service that not only was demanded of her but that she gave willingly um in fact we had to stop her <laughs> from continuing to do service and one of the few last few moments that i got to really connect with her um i could feel almost that they were kind of like my last words with her even though I think we all were not aware how quickly it would happen or how quickly it was going to happen I don't think I was aware of it but my <laughs> subconscious slash paramatma informant knew that these were some of my last moments with her and I remember sharing with her some of you know my own personal thoughts and experiences that I just somehow felt like I wanted to share with her um like a child coming to their grandma, you know, like me, um, and how beautifully she received and just sat there on her bed, like without even showing me that she was in pain or like, you know, I'm just like Suresh, the invincible <laughs> warrior, the invincible butter acharya, um, you know, who never complained and made other you know she never fell into the the habit of a pity party or complaining but she was always rather a support for everyone else and so here i was you know sharing with her some of my ideas and aspirations and you know perspectives and there she was just hearing and sitting on the edge of her bed like holding herself up with her bright blue eyes listening with so much care and attention and asking me questions fully engaged to whatever it is that I wanted to talk about and share from you know the fears I have around my mom so it's my mom going into heart surgery this week on the day of Suresh Didi's funeral so you know very intense kind of time for me personally um so it's just exhausting and sad and heavy and um but just like wow, like remembering how she stood there, sat there on her bed listening to me and giving me advice and giving me support and, you know, telling me, express your concern to the doctor or express this, like, really just being a mentor to a situation that was very, that is very scary for me. Um, and, you know, she did the same for my mom, for Kalindi. And, you know, losing... Ramai Prabhu, who was our Pujari, and losing Suresh Didi, who has been one of our other pillars. Um, you know, we have like three or four, maybe five pillars here in our community who, um, you know, have been present 24-7 in the temple, not just living here on the property, but who are the pillars of the functions of the worship of the deity and the service and the distribution. These devotees, you know, like, as we lose them, this place is forever changed. And so uh, it just makes us kind of think about and something I want to invite everyone who's watching to think about. It's like, how can we become like them? Because we really need people like them, like Kalindi Didi, who's still here with us. And please pray for her as she goes into heart surgery, like Sureshri Didi, who we've just 
lost, like Ramai Prabhu, who we lost several years back, and uh, like Janard Maharaj, who's still here with us, and you know, who really carry out the mood of devotion in this place that we have as, you know, that is known as the Seva Ashram. You know, who, who are the people that are carrying out that mood front and center? Um, you know, I know people are like, in the background, we have so-and-so. And No, but I'm speaking like in the forefront, in the forefront, on the battlefield, 24-7, in the mood of giving, distributing, providing shelter, giving affection, and showing up wholeheartedly, 1,000%, not just on occasion, but every single day. And not just for their designated services, but for every single <laughs> moment to everyone in the community, every guest that steps foot into this place, and every heart that expresses uh, an interest, really, in bhakti yoga, in, uh, you know, Vaishnavism, in Harinam Sankirtan. And so these people are really the stalwarts, warriors, and embodiments of this Prem Nohi Bijapradam, this giving of this seed of bhakti and we must become like them <laughs> like quickly without fail we must learn to embody these moods of giving shelter right bancha kalpataru byascha like we're offering our respects to the feet of the devotees who are like wish fulfilling trees like if you think about sureshri wish fulfilling tree you think about kalindi wish fulfilling tree you think about ramai wish fulfilling tree you think about these devotees who are really actually embodiments of our gurudev and the mood of audarya of distribution these are their qualities these are the staple qualities kind affectionate like emotionally like giving present generous um humble 24 <laughs> 7 non-stop dedicated and so you know let us take note and look at Facebook, right? All of the devotees who knew Suresh posting something, saying something, posting photos, memories, every single person having something to share because these kinds of devotees touch the lives and hearts of so many people, right? They don't, you know, push them away, but they bring them in and draw them in and attract them with that beauty. And also, to, you know, be Malan. So these are the devotees that I had the opportunity in this lifetime to grow up with and to really be raised by. And so, you know, also this realization that those devotees that are left here now, like, whoa, let's take the opportunity to serve them and to be present to them and, and to just, you know, really um, commit to understanding who they are. And so, you know, I wanted to speak about this because it's really heavily weighing on everybody's minds, you know, throughout the day, just randomly remembering like, oh my God, like, you know, you think about, just for me personally, I think about the temple, I think about Sureshri in the kitchen, you know, I think about the altar, I think about Sureshri cooking, <laughs> I think about um, the temple, I think about her walking through the Prashadam Hall, like, and you know, not that we took her for granted, but like, the disbelief that, you know, someone that was such a staple, like a superwoman. I mean, Sureshri Didi, <laughs> she had, you know, heart attacks, strokes, broke her neck, drove her car off of the road, like, had so many operations and so many, like, you know, cancer, like, on numerous occasions, and survived so many things. We were just like, she's superwoman. Like, she's never gonna go. And then, you know, to see that happen... It's and and it's just uh, I don't even know no words to to describe, <sighs> but you know it really brings a, a perspective. It's like, you know, what are we doing <laughs> with our lives? You know, what are we doing with our tongues? What are we doing with our minds? Um, you know, Sureshri, I've mentioned her many times on these live streams. She would always be playing transcendental sound vibration, always listening. To Krishna Kata and reading and speaking and so I would say if we can take away anything from her example there are several things and one of them being always 
listening and absorbing, you know, listening to and absorbing transcendental sound. And I can't say that I'm doing that every day, all the time, uh, at all. And I can't say that I'm going to do it every day, all the time. But like, these are devotees who do, who embody that and who actually practice that and carry it out. And not just as a duty, but like with attraction and with dedication and commitment that comes and springs forth from their own heart, right? Um, things that we have to train ourselves to do and that we have to struggle to do, they do willingly, effortlessly, continuously, uninterruptedly. And so um, as I think about her, you know, I think about these things and I wanted to share them because there may be devotees who didn't maybe know her or who didn't get to meet her. And, you know, I can't say everything was always like easy. There were times that were kind of like challenging with her, you know, growing up. And there was something I wanted to say to her that like I didn't get to say. And I remember in this moment that I was speaking to her, I'm like, I was thinking I should say this to her, but I don't know why I didn't. Um, but, you know, just remembering as a child, sometimes being chastised by her or, you know, things that like kind of affected me <laughs> and that I wanted to kind of reveal to her to kind of let go of. But I know that I have the opportunity to kind of clear that and let go of that now because I know she can still be here and she's still listening. And so, um, you know, the Vaishnav never dies, the Vaishnav never leaves, and they are with us in sound. They are with us in spirit, and it takes us really connecting to that and praying and beseeching them, right? Like praying, like, please hear me, please tell me something, please, you know, um, and that comes through meditation, that comes through um, introspection and going within and... Um, trying to make that connection because we know and we've heard we're not this body we know and we've heard that we are soul we know and we've heard that the Vaishnavs never die we know and we've heard that they exist in sound and so how can we connect to them through um, you know our everyday life and um, you know pray that they have a place for us wherever they've gone you know knowing that they're going somewhere with our Gurudev a life of service like that right what's interesting about bhakti yoga is that we're not trying to have like mystical powers or fame or you know um prestige and and that's not how we measure our success in bhakti um and i can't necessarily say that i know how we measure measure our success because i don't even think we're aiming to measure our success but i would say that if there's any indicator <laughs> it's this spontaneous embodiment of service and um you know a concept that i'm meditating on because i can't say i know it or have realized it but you know we've heard of this mood of sacrifice and we've heard of sacrifice and sometimes to be honest you know sacrifice does not sound very appealing to me right like i've grown up in the ashram kind of being forced to sacrifice like kind of against my own inclinations right and so like sometimes i have like a kind of like resistance to this concept of sacrifice um it's kind of a little unpalatable for me just like religion or god might be for others right but something i'm thinking about and perhaps you know as i'm meditating on this i'll be able to come back and share about this concept of sacrifice but what i do understand is this concept of sacrifice not even being something that we have a reaction to or something that we have a a, um, a charge towards or something that we have to think about or try for but rather something that comes effortlessly for example like a ballerina a ballerina that is training is like practicing over and over and there's a strain and there's difficulty and there's uh, sweating and there's you know challenge and pain and we'll just say there is always pain in ballet but to continue with the example that point where the ballerina has practiced and practiced and practiced and that repetition of movement is no longer an endeavor but rather something that comes effortlessly through practice now we you know can see that the ballerina is gracefully floating across the stage and so in this way you know this idea and embodiment that Suresh Didi and these other wonderful devotees that I continue to name that have been the pillars of our devotional 
practices and activities and, and temple routines and worship of the deity and, and that function, you know, they've practiced for so long that it's become effortless. It's become ingrained in who they are and a part of who they are. We're still striving, right? Or I'll speak for myself, still striving, still trying. It's still like, you know, and, and, you know, they also like, right? Suri Shri had challenges, you know, all these devotees, we're all humans, right? We have our challenges, but you know, what we can see from her example is this effortlessness and committed, no question of commitment and will she be reliable, right? Like some of us are still in that stage, like, can we rely on this person to do this service? <laughs> like, can we rely on them to show up for what they signed up for or whatever it is? <laughs> you know, there's still a question on that from our end. But these devotees, there's no question. They are there. They've become a part of the paraphernalia of worship to the deities. They've become their property. Sureshri has become the property of their lordships, an eternal function of their service in not only this ashram and this dham, this is not an ordinary place, this is an embassy of the spiritual world, despite the material coverings and situations that may happen, this is an embassy, a portal of the spiritual world. And so we can see, you know, in, in, in this song, this first song of Sri Sikshastakam, um, there are these songs that are accompanying the Sikshastakam. And in one of those verses is, you know, the Krishna Kirtana Jaya Siddha Swarupa, right? Like Krishna Kirtan reveals your Siddha Swarup, your spiritual form. And so we can see the form that the devotees of these, this dom, these pillar servitors, we can begin to see their spiritual form, their spiritual identity. They have become property, serving property and paraphernalia of the function of worship in this spiritual plane, the dom, which is not ordinary. This is a dom, you know, it's not just like, an ashram, a seva ashram, resident property, right? No, this is a spiritual embassy <laughs> and we can see their function. They are rooted. And again, I'll say it again. They have become property of their lordships. They are alive, activated worship paraphernalia of the deities. They come, they come with the temple, <laughs> right? And they don't leave it and they don't want to. And it's natural to them and effortless through their committed, dedicated service, their uninterrupted service. And again, service, right? Can be a charged word, right? It can be a word that, you know, is like service or whatever, whatever, right? Like we may not all have a full realization or mm, a full kind of experience or taste of what that is for us because we each have our own service connection and relationship to the Lord, right? It doesn't look like hers or his or theirs or everyone else's or anyone else's. Each and every one of us has our own service relationship. And so it takes time to establish and develop that and to, you know, get that. Just like, again, back to the analogy of the dancer, of the ballerina, you know, every ballerina is learning the same things, fondue, tandu, saute, like all the things, like they're, they're learning the same exact thing, but each one, although learning the same moves and drills, has their own flavor of expression, right? Their own bhav, their own abhinaya, right? In the world of dance, bhav abhinaya is like, right? The bhav is like the mood of devotion. Every servitor has their own unique mood of devotion, their own unique service relationship that takes time to develop just as the abhinaya of a dancer, the emotion and expression of a dancer takes time to develop and is unique and individual to every single dancer, unique and individual to every single servitor. So we are in the process of developing our serving relationship. And, you know, again, if there's a service like your relationship to service is your own and you get to have that be revealed through the practice of serving right through the dedication and through the guidance of the spiritual master of the siksha and diksha spiritual you know instructing and initiating spiritual master or both or all of the above right 
So, you know, it's a process and we see, you know, Sureshri's passing is, <laughs> how can we say this, you know, just as like karma has its stages, right? It's three, it's different stages, the root, the fruit, and, and so on, the seed, the root, the fruit, you know, our devotional life has its stages. And we could say that her, you know, service identity has fully blossomed and she has you know, it has been revealed to her and it has been embodied by her in this life. And without a doubt, everybody sees that and can see that and has seen that and has recognized that and has felt that and experienced and witnessed that far and wide. And through, you know, we can relatively say that her service had to do with cooking, right? This was the field in which she got to serve, right? from Srila Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada to, you know, so many devotees that she served with this service um, of, of cooking, literally and figuratively, you know. And uh, funny, because um, to bring it back to the physical, like, today I was hungry, and I was like, I'm hungry. Like, you know, where I've been like, I don't want to eat, you know, oil or this and that, because she was known as the butter acharya, right? And um, always cooking with butter and oil and all the things. And, you know, even though they were yummy, sometimes I was like, oh my God, I just can't eat it. <laughs> like, And I would sometimes be like, oh my God, I don't want to eat it. I can't eat it. And today I'm like, all I want is one of her sandwiches. <gasps> what about her soups? <laughs> and I will tell really a quick, a quick story. You know, one time, uh, I was living in Oakland in the Bay Area about an hour and a half from SoCal. I was finishing my degree and, you know, cooking for myself, living my life, living on my own, really, kind of for the first time outside the temple. Um, and um, it was a codice and I was thinking, oh man, I, you know, there were times where I'd think about the akadasi prashadam that she would make because she would make these delicious soups and she would throw blocks of cheese and blocks of butter in there. <laughs> and, you know, you can be terrified, horrified, or you can be like, oh yeah, right? Like depending on your perspective and you can have a little bit of both because that was also my <laughs> kind of experience sometimes. But, you know, I would think about her mashed potatoes and her, I feel like Jannard Maharaj should talking about food, <laughs> uh, prashadam, uh, her mashed potatoes and her sandwiches and all these things. And, you know, I, I think about the Akadashi prashadam that she would always make, so delicious. And I remember that one time my mom was visiting and she had brought me some soup that Sureshri had made. And I... I feel like crying because in that moment I felt like crying. I remember eating her soup and I felt like crying because I could taste this like devotion, this like buttery, heartwarming, grandma love, like Krishna butter, mother Yashoda, Prabhupada, Krishna explosion of like love and devotion in that soup. And like, I think... Actually, this is really awesome to remember. I think it's like one of one of the moments or maybe one of the first moments where I like experience some sort of like, whoa, some sort of like heart opening from prashadam. You know, and I hear many cool stories about like new devotees, right? When they first have prashadam or when they first see the deities. And, you know, I was born and raised in Krishna consciousness. So it's been around me all my life. So I don't always have experiences like that. I, I do have them. And, and, you know, I have stories about moments where I've like, you know, had these like, ah, oh, like a new awakening, right? Um, and this was one of them with Prashad in relation to Sureshri in her um, soup. Those butternut squash potato creamy soups. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, and I remember having that experience with her food, with her Prashadam. And, you know, this this line in the Tulsi song of, you know, Bina Tulasi Prabhu Eka Nahimani. Like, without Tulsi, without a leaf, you know, Tulsi leaf on the plate, right, on the offering, without devotion, right, Krishna, Prabhu Eka Nahimani will not give mind. So without devotion, 
Krishna will not even give mind to an offering or to our offering or endeavor. He is a consumer of bhav, right, of devotion. Um, and so we can very well say, like, how many meals did Suresh Didi cook with so much devotion and love, not only for their lordships, but for the devotees? And how many, how, you know, how many devotees can we say you can all count yourselves <laughs> in this experience if you've experienced this. How many devotees can we say experience some sort of nurturing, love, awakening, and expansion feeling from having her prashadam, right? Like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Like having prashadam for the first time and recognizing this is not just food, right? Recognizing there's something that's happening in my soul, right? There's something that's that I am receiving and experiencing that is beyond just eating and chewing something, right? Maha prashade govinde nami brahmani vaishnave svalpa punyavatam rajan vishvaso naivajayate, right? This prashad mantra describing how the tongue, you know, is voracious. <laughs> and it's like, the lead sinner in our body, which can be described as a network of ignorance. But by conquering the tongue with Maha Prashadam, Sureshri Deity being the general, like in the forefront of the Prashad distribution, right? Conquering the tongue with Prashadam, we can, or by, yeah, by honoring Prashadam, we can conquer the tongue, right? And we can call out Chaitanya Nidai, right? We can, through this tasting and honoring of prashadam, and again, she has been in the forefront. And what is prashadam? Prashadam is one of, it's like kirtan. It's one, it's like eating form of kirtan. It's like the distribution of Krishna <laughs> in the form of food, right? In the form of his mercy. And so it's just so beautiful to think about that and to think about you know, even though we may, oh, how materialistic. I mean, it is true, right, that it's not super healthy to eat all these oils and things. And, um, you know, one of the conversations I had with her was like, how can we have healthier prashadam? Like, how can we, you know, have that better health through our prashadam? And she was like, how can I support you? Whatever we can do, let me get the spreadsheets. Let's find replacement ingredients. Let's get everything organic. And so that's a project that I started working on with her before she left. And I just... I just took too long to follow up with her and to get back to her. But now it's a project that, you know, I would love to try to bring to life and perhaps, you know, in a team effort in her honor because I began this project with her. But, you know, we can say that's a material perspective, but there's some, you know, positives there too. But, you know, if we kind of zoom beyond that and like consider how transcendental her engagement has been and how you know cognizant she has been and was this entire time about the power of prashadam the mercy of prashadam the distribution the mood of audarya of giving shelter nourishment nurturing and changing people's lives and their souls trajectory through this cooking of boga and offering it to the their lordships to be returned to us in the form of prashadam. She was the principal, you know, like general heading that mission up. And so, you know, we've lost our butter acharya. <laughs> we've lost our head distributor of prashadam. And, and we've seen what kind of blessing and mercy, that kind of commitment to that mood of distribution and giving and nurturing, what that lends. Her passing has been glorious. Passed in the association of devotees, taking care of her 24-7. Like, you know, Krishna providing his devotees in service of her health, of her life. And not just her life, but of her crossing over, right? Of her leaving this world. What, what is one of the most terrifying experiences one of the things we're most afraid of in this life, and or at least I'll speak for myself, death, so scary, right? So inopportune, so like breathtaking, literally, like so 
oof, you know, it's, it's this fear of death, right? Has become, you know, death has become glorious and beautiful. Like I thought like, wow. Like when you, again, when you watch a ballerina, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so easy. It looks so easy. You know, she suffered, don't get me wrong, but like she made, <laughs> you know, she made death look so beautiful and feel so beautiful. I thought, wow. Like personally speaking for myself, I thought, thank you. Like this unexpected, like, thank you, Suresh, for being a, so brave and such an example of how to properly die. <laughs> like, like, this is new, like something that I was thinking about that night as we were, you know, chanting around her body. I was like in shock and in awe at like how beautiful of a passing it was. Truly, like she made death not seem so bad. <laughs> like, thank you for alleviating my heart a little bit. And just the beauty, like of her passing, you know, like leaving while being read the second chapter of the Gita. Deva Priya Didi was reading to her the second chapter of the Gita as she passed away in the temple room, right next door to the temple room, surrounded by photos of devotees and servitors and our acharyas being read transcendental sound, right? Bhagavad Gita, chapter two. That's how she passed. And then I'm sure she was lingering, right? Like we've heard like the, the soul still kind of around. Who knows that we cannot say, right? But I could definitely feel some things and I'll share. But to then, you know, if, if one is witnessing that moment, have your body carried before the deities to be offered and seen and given darshan like watching that in your subtle form and having all your friends and loved ones and devotees thinking of you and speaking beautiful memories of your of service and and then singing and as we were standing there I could you know, we were chanting, I could almost hear her like, come on, dance. <laughs> and if any of you knew Suresh, uh, she is a party animal. She was a party animal. She loved to party. And that's something that I also really want to mention is that, you know, we think of like, being a devotee looks like this and it looks like following all the rules and regulations and being strict and like you know like no enjoyment but one of the funnest things about Sureshri is that she was fun <laughs> like she would party with you you know like all the ladies you know would go out to the movies with her and go take walks on the beach and go eat together and go shopping like all the stories about Sureshri Didi shopping right so um, and you know, she would sometimes like, you know, there's things we're not meant to offer on the altar, like chocolate and tofu and, you know, like pre-made things. And for the pleasure of the devotees, Sureshri would, you know, provide us with all these snacks and things that maybe weren't always offerable, but for the pleasure of the devotees with this mood of, you know, like, I want to make this delicious and fun and like, party let loose you know that was really kind of a bit of her mood and you know whenever you know if you came to Suresh with some pain or grievance or suffering she'd always be like ah, like lighten up like okay like and kind of set you straight and then be like cut loose like throw your hands up kind of like a, a vibe and so you know our devotees are all unique and different and it doesn't look like one thing to be Krishna conscious. It doesn't look a, like this way to be Krishna conscious. It doesn't look this way to be devotional. It doesn't look this way to be um, dedicated. It doesn't look like this to be, you know, 
a Vaishnav, right? And, you know, they, they come in all shapes and sizes and have all sorts of characteristics and qualities. And um, Sureshri Didi was a party animal. And she was so much fun, you know, from celebrating people's birthdays and all the birthday cards that would get passed around. I have so many birthday cards that I've saved over the years. Um, that she initiated and birthday gifts and yummy meals and food and like she'd find out what your favorite food was and make it for you and like like what's your favorite in like I remember as a kid being like I love Mexican pizzas <laughs> you know from Taco Bell right and she figured out how to make Mexican pizzas like I wanted them for my birthday and I like I felt spoiled and special and like yeah, I'm a spoiled, I'm a spoil. I'm one of her many spoiled granddaughters who felt this way. So, you know, giving the devotees some confidence and nurturing and like, I see you, you are loved, like you deserve a party too. <laughs> like very like beautiful, basic, loving things that we, you know, she like made ashram life not so terrible, you know, she made it fun, made it comforting, you know, made it playful, made it safe, made it nurturing. And um, I think it's really special to remember these qualities um, because, you know, even though this world is filled with suffering, we don't have to suffer. And Krishna consciousness is a party religion. <laughs> and she was like the head of that party in the kitchen and everywhere she went. And she was so much fun and is so much fun, you know, and I could feel her almost like, come on, dance, you guys, like, don't be so sad, like, let's go. And she was known or infamous for, for throwing her hands up in the, in the RT at whenever the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra would start. Sorry, Shri Didi. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, with this kind of Krishna, Krishna, Hare Ha. Ray, with kind of like an iskon kind of Hare Rama, like, and you know, no offense to imitate her, like I have pleasure remembering her and her voice and singing and, you know, Mangalarti is accompanied, you know, by her, with her, one of the only two or three to show up, you know, without a doubt, without fail, until she couldn't anymore because of her health. I remember looking to her window to see if her light was on or if her bathroom light was on. That's how I knew she was coming to the morning RT. <laughs> so not that I'm there all the time, but when I have the Mangal RT Seva, then I'm there. And so, you know, really beautiful memories and also really beautiful time because we still have our devotees here left with us. You know, these devotees that got to meet Srila Sridhar Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Govinda Maharaj, and got to really get a wave of a sentiment of a feel for what is devotion, what is bhakti, what is service, what is embodiment, what is, you know, guardianship, mentorship, what is support, what is nourishment, and what is you know, cleansing the mirror of the mind. And what what is kalpatadu? What is it to be a wish-fulfilling tree kind of devotee? And my mom shared this story with me about how Sureshri had told her former husband, who had passed before her um, when she was still in ISKCON, I believe. And she had said to him something along the lines of, and I'm paraphrasing, like, I want to be with... Nectarian devotees. Like, I want to be with Nectarian devotees. Uh, I don't I don't want to be with, you know, these. I want to be around Nectarian devotees. And he said to her, then you become a Nectarian devotee. And this is my mom. My mom said this to me, Kalindi Didi. And she, my mom said, and she became a Nectarian devotee. And she really did. <sighs> you know, she became a Nectarian devotee. And, you know, sometimes, you know, some of our generation or people, we'd be like, we want healthier for prashadam. Like, Suresh is always cooking so heavy, you know? And I came to her and I was like, we we want to do this. And, and 
instead of a fight she was like how can i help you how can i support you let's do this i want to support you in whatever way that i can to make this happen and she immediately and i was like wow like i always thought you were going to be opposed and she told me like people always had ideas about me but i just want to be helpful i just want to do what's best for everyone and people get these ideas about me <laughs> and she was so supportive and so yeah i mean i think i want to just pause for a second <laughs> Just such a beautiful example and I it's it's we're, we're all in disbelief we're all kind of in shock we can't believe it it's hard like when Ramai left it's like your mind goes to like oh Ramai's down in the kitchen oh he's not in the kitchen <laughs> like Suresh I'm gonna go that Suresh oh Suresh isn't there <laughs> like it's hard so you know here at the Seva Ashram we are all kind of grieving right now and you know sometimes laughing sometimes crying you know like just like suddenly break into tears so it's not easy but like with what we have now like I remember saying um, to, you know, we had, we had some kirtan and she passed away at 11.45 p.m. And um, I was sleeping when Maharaj came to knock on Divya's door and I heard him knocking and I thought, no. Oh. And then I heard him say, Suresh Didi left her body wake up by day he go you know and I was already like opening the door waking up and you know couldn't believe it and um we all went down I got my mom and the whole ashram woke up and and we all went down to the temple like oh my gosh you know and them bringing her body to the temple room and all of us like, oh my god, I want to see, but I don't want to see, but it, like, you know, the emotions of, like, what, you know, like, but then, like, how beautiful she looked, and how, you know, we immediately covered her in garlands, and there was this aroma, this, like, transcendental aroma filled the temple room, and we could all feel, like, almost like she expanded her butteracharianess into the ether, <laughs> and we could all feel, like, some nourishment and her daughter was there Adi and so we stayed chanting for some time and then soon the devotee you know like around midnight or 1 a.m. sorry around like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Maharaj was like they're not gonna come you know to remove to to take her body until several hours from now you know and so many of the devotees went back to sleep and went home and some devotees came from off the property you know away from nearby and um a few of us stayed literally stayed up that night till 5 a.m um really around 4 a.m they came around 3 a.m and so we were all just sitting around her like like hanging out in the temple room telling stories and there's this moment where I thought, wow, it's so interesting to see how when someone passes, we have all these amazing things to say and all these amazing realizations and all these amazing experiences. But when they're there, we may be like, you know, or like not fully tuned into that all the time. And I said, wow, just look at how many magical, beautiful moments, memories and experiences we all have had to share and how special and like relishable these moments are this means that every single person that's here right now is also relishable and that those moments are alive right now for us to experience with the devotees that are here right now and so just like having that realization that like let's be nectarian devotees and let's see the nectarian quality of the devotees that are around us now 
let's be like the Chetuk bird. And I'm not going to say that I can embody this myself, but this is an ideal. Like, let's be like the swan and just see the nectar. Let's be like the Chetuk bird and just receive the blessing of the devotees that are around us now, you know, and having that kind of realization of like, wait, we all have these memories and then we lose them. And then all of a sudden we have these moments, these experiences and this like function that these devotees are providing and, you know, doing every day. And, and we just kind of like, you know, we depend on the earth and then there's an earthquake and we're like, whoa, right? It's almost like that. Like we depend on them and rely on them. And then when they move, when they go away, we're like, oh my God, this thing that's always been happening is now gone. And so that's happening now, every day with the devotees that are here. So how can we like seriously forget the past that sleeps and ne'er the future dream at all, but really act in times with these moments and, and transcendentalize, nectarize our vision and take that example of like Sureshri saying, I want to be with nectarian devotees and her husband saying, then you become a nectarian devotee. So how can we become a nectarian devotee and see the nectarian quality in all of the devotees that are around us and just like operate and function and move forward like that, you know? <sighs> And it may take some practice <laughs> and time. But, you know, I think about Jivana and how she's always kind to everyone without fail. And so beautiful to everyone every day without fail. And I would say, like, she really lives that. She really lives that. Being a Nectarian devotee and seeing the Nectarian qualities in everyone. Like, I've never seen... Or heard or felt like Jivana was mean to me or rude or to anyone, right? And so, you know, let's, how can we be in that frequency and, and in the remembrance of these very special devotees and with the devotees that are still present now? And, you know, um, Adi said something about Sureshri the night we were all sitting around her as when she passed and she said, do you want to know her secret? And she said it again. Do you want to know her secret? I'm going to tell you her secret. She told me that whenever you would all come to her with complaints or problems about other devotees, she would, and I'm paraphrasing, so I'm sure she can say this again in, in, in the right words, but she would always just try to make you all do service together so that you would like forget about whatever problem. So she would like uh, counsel and mentor to make everyone do service together and just like come into harmony. So, you know, our service connection is the, the balm for these realizations, for this healing, for this connection, for this, um, removal of obstacles and pain, like our service connection with each other serving the center, giving our energy to this mood of distribution here. So that means prashad distribution, kirtan, you know, worship of the deities, like us coming together into these services together. Like let's drop the crap and the gossiping and the criticism and, you know, all these things. Like how can we come together and see the nectarian qualities in each other, relate to those and serve together? so that we can hopefully maybe imitate and hope for the embodiment one day of the mood of service that these devotees have so beautifully embodied. These devotees that have left and these devotees that are still here who are pillars of the worship of their lordships here at the Seva Ashram. So this is what I really want to share and it's an aspiration. It's um, an illumination. It, these are the thoughts I've been having around Sureshri's passing. And, you know, please forgive my offenses and any mistakes, misconceptions, or errors. 
Um, but these are the realizations and um, experiences of my heart personally to be shared with all of you with the hope of relaying some of the beauty and experience and expression and embodiment that I've had the opportunity to witness through Suresh Ray Didi and experience through Suresh Ray Didi with Suresh Ray Didi. And um, literally watched her blossom into this soft, gentle, all accommodating, abundant, wise matriarch. You know, sometimes she could be kind of harsh and stern and chastising and castigating and pushy, right? Uh, as a child, I could sometimes like, ooh, felt a bit scarred by, you know, some of that. Um, but I, you know, we all watched her like evolve into her full potential and capacity and Kalpatadu embodiment, wishful filling tree embodiment. And, you know, that's all the past. What is now is this beautifully realized, saintly distributor of mercy who worked tireless, tirelessly and who made it almost seem effortless through her mood of non-complaining, dedicated, non-stop, warrior-like <laughs> determination to cook for their lordships and has become, like I said, again, paraphernalia of the worship of their lordships. She is property of their lordships, as are the devotees that remain here. And my time here in the Seva Ashram now is about, you know, being in their proximity. I may not associate with them every day or seek their shelter every day, which, you know, like, maybe I should start doing that if I can, you know, put two and two together and actually, like, walk my talk. That'd be nice. Please pray, praying for that. But to at least be in their proximity and see them is, you know, one step in that direction. And hopefully... I can take more steps in that direction of having their shelter and their blessings and recognizing that each devotee has their different qualities, characteristics, and even their little different grumpiness and little things <laughs> that they have. And how can we love those and be present to those and honor them properly? And just honor them. Like, let's just stop you know, how can we stop putting up the fight or the judgment or whatever and like just like honor them and surrender and try to do our best to serve together as a team. You know, how can we that? I'm, it's a question. I can't say I have the answer, but praying for those answers and praying that, you know, somehow some nice seeds of thought have been planted um, for your own meditation and introspection and relishing and hopefully maybe I've transmitted something of the beauty of Sureshri and her passing and I do I would say that there's so much more that I could say but I'm just so present to this present moment that I can't like it's just what's coming from me. Like, I, you know, I'm still kind of in shock and grief and stuff. So I'm just present to, to what's flowing. And I hope that you can also be present to what's flowing and that you can allow yourself the opportunity to speak and share and remember and connect with other devotees and share in her memories. Because, you know, just as Krishna says, like, you know, talks of me, you know, like, these talks of me are relishable and where there is talk of Krishna, Krishna comes, you know, and like where there's the worship of their lordships, Shiva, Sukha, Narada, and like all the demigods are coming and witnessing where there is Kirtan. And so where there is this transcendental remembrance and talking of this beautiful devotee, like there is the presence of that devotee because the Vaishnav lives in sound and in the remembrance of their, that never goes, that form of service never goes and is eternally present. So we can continue living with that and experiencing that through these talks. It comes alive 
So let's keep talking. Let's keep that lit. Let's keep these conversations going. Let's keep remembering our devotees and their beautiful moods. And let's also be present to the current devotees and their current beautiful moods. And let's speak to those, glorify those. Let's become nectarian devotees and nurture each other and love each other. Love and affection, home, comfort. How can we embody that? They embodied it and we're following in their footsteps. So how can we embody that? So I believe it might be time. Um, let me see. I cannot see the... Yep. It's just about 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I will close here. And... Go put their lordships to rest. But um, we sang this song. Jayanilo Premadana. And I wonder if it's in this book. If not, then I guess not. Okay, there it is. It's on page 143 of the Kirtan Guide. Um, seventh edition. And it's really such a beautiful song. So if you have some time to meditate, here's some homework for this evening. <laughs> One, grab a devotee and share some beautiful pastimes and stories. Find someone here in this chat. Maladhari is here. Uh, Marco Bruno is here. Um, Patricia is here. Madana Mohini, Rasangi, Vrindavan Vilasini, uh, Gor Goranga, Gor Nataraj. Um, I'm just reading through everyone. Rajbu Yadav, Hare Krishna Dandavat, Fabiola, Vrindavan Vilasini, I already said. Uh, Krishna Kanti is here and has been watching. Krishna Lalana, Adi Keshava, Chet Wiley, I believe, is Chin, Chin Moyananda. Krishna Surya. And who else is here? Praneshwari, yes, dear Sureshwari Didi Ki Jai. Lance is here. Uh, Madhav Prabhu is here. Ma Mary Solange is here. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranams to everybody that's here. Grab a friend in this chat and maybe share some stories of Suresh Didi or something you've heard tonight that touched your heart, feel free to comment. What are you walking away with from this conversation? What resonated with you? What's something that you'll remember from tonight's remembrance of Suresh Didi? Let's spread that word. Let's be in the spirit of speaking gloriously about this beautiful devotee and grab a friend and go call them up if you know each other and or exchange contact information and share some stories, share something about beautiful devotee and then your next piece of homework if you will take me up on this is to read this this song read the translation viraha giti 143 in the seventh edition of the kirtan guide j anilo prema dana with a j and it's this beautiful you know song about the vaishnavs who have gone off into their own pastimes written by srila naratam das Thakur, and we appropriately sang this song led by Srila Bhakti Pavan Janarda Maharaj on the evening of her passing. It's a song that we closed with. So if you have a chance to sing this song and to read the words, please do. And with that, I will leave you. And, um, you know, it's Jaya Nilo Premadana Koruna Prachur Heno Prabhu Kota gela charya takur Kaha moda swadu prupa Kaha sanatan Kaha dasaragu nata patita pavan Kaha moda bata juga Kaha kaviraj Eka kale Kota gela Goda nataraj 
पशान कूती बो माता अनाल पशिब गौरंग गु नेरा निरी कोता के ले पाबो से संब से सब संगीरा संगे जे कोई लो बिलास से संगना पाया करे नारो तमदास हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे श्री सरे श्री दीदी की जाय जाय सपरी कर श्री श्री गुरु गौरंग गंधर्वी का गिरि धारी जो की जाय श्री ल भक्ति पवन जनार्दन महाराज की जाय श्री ल भक्ति सुंदर गोविंद देव गोस्वामी महाराज की जाय श्री ल भक्ति रखक श्रीदर देव गोस्वामी महाराज की जाय श्री ल ए सी भक्ति वदंत स्वामी प्रभु पद की जाय श्री ल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर की जाय नमचार्य श्री ल हरिदास ठाकुर की जाय श्री रूप अनुगा गुरु वर्ग की जाय सपरशाद श्री नितिनंद प्रभु की जाय सपरशाद श्री मन बहा प्रभु की जाय श्री बलदेव सुभद्र जगन्नाथ जी की जाय श्री भक्ति विघ्ना विनाशाय श्री श्री हरदेव की जाय भक्त प्रभार श्री प्रलाद महाराज की जाय वृंदावन पुरुषोत्तम धाम की जाय श्री मायापुर धाम की जाय श्री नवद्वीप धाम की जाय श्री गंग जमुना जी की जाय श्री वृंद देवी भक्ति देवी तुलसी देवी की जाय श्रीमद् भागवतम श्री चैतन्य चरितामृता की की जाए श्रीमद् भागवत कीता की जाए श्रील भक्ति निर्मल चाय महाराज की जाए श्री चैतन्य सरस्वत मत चाय वृंदा की जाए श्री चैतन्य सरस्वत मत की जाए श्री चैतन्य सरस्वत सेवा अश्रम की जाए हनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंदा की जाए समवेद भक्त वृंदा की जाए श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए श्रीमती सरेश्वरी दीदी की जाए श्रीमती सरेश्वरी दीदी की जाए श्रीमती सरेश्वरी दीदी की जाए नीताय गोड प्रेमानंदे हरि बोल I offer my dandavat for nams to all of you bancha kalpatru vyascha krupa sindhu vyaye vacha patitanam bhavani bio vaishnavi bio namo namaha sakala vaishnava pare mora namaskari de kichu aparad na hukamar होय अचन होय बिन प्रभु जतो भक्त जन वंदन करियामी सबर चरण थैंक यू फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू प्रैक्टिस दिस इज माय टाइम फॉर प्रैक्टिसिंग थैंक यू फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू प्रैक्टिस टू रिमेंबर टू स्पीक एंड टू आल्सो हियर आई एम सो ग्रेटफुल फॉर दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू सर्व इन दिस वे एंड वी डिडंट गो लाइव आई डिडंट गो लाइव लास्ट वीक बिकॉज इट वाज श्री कृष्ण जन्माष्टमी and i also didn't go live on thursday because there is just so much happening and um this thursday i am not sure if i will go live for the reading of revealed truth because my mom will be in surgery that day so i'm asking for all of the devotees who are watching who are here to please 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 pray for shrimati kalindi didi she will be going through heart surgery on thursday September 9th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time so at that time please and during that day throughout that day as much as possible please pray for her visualize it going smoothly before during after and beyond that her operation goes smoothly that she is with good health that guru dev gives her strength and health and healing and that everything goes divinely guided by the lord by their lordships so that we can continue having her beautiful association here in this plane on this planet for as long as possible <laughs> as she is such a beautiful pillar and support for this ashram and also my dear mama and best friend <laughs> i feel like her and guru dev both teamed up to give each other to me <laughs> she teamed up with guru dev to give him to me in my life and he teamed up with her to give her <laughs> to me in my life so by their blessings by her blessings i have guru dev by his blessings i have her and by their blessings i have a connection to krishna consciousness and any any if any good qualities and blessings that i have are from her and from him so please pray 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 for her health 
<clears throat> especially on this day and that her recovery goes well and smoothly and that we have all of the tools support and capacity to help her and to take care of her during her time of recovery and if you are local in Santa Cruz and you have some time please come to visit and to see her and to help somehow to take care of her it will be a lot and I'm a bit nervous and scared <laughs> so <sighs> please send your prayers Dandavat Pranams. So I may or may not go live. I may go live, <laughs> but I may also be in the hospital and I may also go live from the hospital or I may not. We shall see. That day is also the funeral and cremation of Suresh Ray Didi. So I'm just like, <laughs> like a very strong day. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> So please, asking for your blessings and your prayers. Please, please, please. Okay. Thank you. I see all the hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please come visit. We need all of your association here at the SoCal Seva Ashram. We have a big service routine. And we would love everybody's love, affection, and support and presence during these times. Hare Krishna Jai Gurudev Hari Bol Shri Nishring Hadev Ki Jai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Sparikara Shri Shri Guru Goranga Gandharika Giri Hare Jai Ki Jai I'm going to go put their lordships to rest now. <laughs> what an honor. Dandavat Pranams. Pashane kuti bo mata Anale pashi bo Gauranga gu nera niri kota gele pabo Se samba se saba sangira sange Je koi lo bilas Se sanga na paya kade naro tamadas Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare 